Hey guys, it's Cassie and today we've got a little bit of a different video. This is 2022 fashion trends between London versus New York. Basically, since moving, I've kind of become a little bit more observational of the fashion trends between the two cities. You know when you live somewhere you don't even sort of notice after a bit and you're just like going about your life you might see a fun outfit and you're like that's cool but you don't really like pick up on these sorts of trends and especially now that the weather between the two cities is very similar I thought that I would present to you my observations uh, because there are some similarities and some differences and I think that it's quite fun so stick with me me. Guys, if you are new here, my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, so if you like luxury fashion, then you're gonna love it here. So head on there, subscribe, turn on the bell, become a member of our luxury addicted family. When are we going to rehab? <laughs> Never. Guys, are you ready? Let's jump into it. Also, obviously, this isn't, you know, talking about every area in either of these cities. This is mainly like your very central London and Manhattan. Keep that in mind. And this is just me from my gallivantations. I'm not the Oracle. I don't know everything, but this is just what I've picked up. Okay, so number one, trenches versus shackets shirt jacket. Right, so we're gonna start off with the London side. London, we are living up to our very best stereotype, okay, our very best Sherlock Holmes impersonation with a trench. The amount of trenches I saw when I went to visit back home was like, you couldn't miss it. Everybody was loving a trench and I get it. It's such a great topper for this time of year, especially. It's thin enough such that by the middle of the day, you're not like, <laughs> I made a mistake getting dressed in the morning because I can hardly breathe and I'm sweating profusely but I'm actually sweating too much now that I can't take anything off. We've all been there. Lots of different colours obviously but the most popular is always the very classic beige. It's also very weatherproof, you know? Should you be caught in the rain, which happens in both of these cities, um, it's rather convenient. Now, I've seen these styled in a number of ways. Um, one of, our, actually, my favourite ways is here. I haven't seen this on the street, obviously, but I just came across this and I thought that it was fun. And I think trenches are a really great way of wearing something maybe a little bit skimpier underneath, but you're still, because trenches hit quite low, you're still quite covered from the elements. So you can be like, oh, a look, but I'm topped it off so that actually practically, I'm still a little toasty. You know, I think trenches are a lot more versatile than one may think and they can be dressed up or down. So great to see a lot of trenches conversely. Um, stateside, jackets, a shirt jacket, in lots of different ways and weights. So I've seen everything from like, you know, a classic button up cotton shirt to sort of nylon shirts that again, you're getting that weatherproof aspect all the way to, you know, like a flannel. I would definitely say the jacket tends to be a lot more casual. There are ways to dress it up or down and you definitely can, but I would say on the whole, definitely more on the casual side. And again, I like the variety in these that you can go for, the difference in fabrics and weights and all of that. The next trend, this one was very interesting to me, jeans, right? Let's delve into the differences between both cities. Because as we know, and I've been very sadly, reporting to you over the last year or so. Skinnies are out, okay? Whether or not you care. I personally don't care. Skinnies are out and we're definitely seeing more of a relaxed jean, but what's quite interesting is the difference in styles between the two cities. The UK, London, much more of a straight leg and dare I say a couple of boot cuts clip clopping around town, oh hello. So again, definitely more relaxed. Definitely still high rise though, which I found very interesting because conversely in New York, a lot baggier, um, a lot more low rise, high rise is still around, but I have seen a lot more low rise here than I have back in London. And definitely more of that sort of borrowed from the boys, a little bit more looser, wider than the straight legs happening in London. Does that make sense? There is quite a lot of crossover here in that. Yes, you do still see the skinny jean, but if we're talking about like trends, you can definitely see the switch towards 
something a little bit looser, a little bit more relaxed, all of that. Just a random observation that I did just want to mention, something that's really interesting when I was sort of comparing my notes between these two cities is that generally New York tends to take whatever trend London is also experiencing. It's a bit bolder. People in New York will tend to go for the riskier trends and still pull it off kind of thing. But I think uh, people in New York are a bit more willing to take those fashion risks as opposed to Londoners who are on the whole very stylish but I just think when it comes to those like mm, out of the box a little bit edgy blah 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 definitely more New York. The next trend is all about boots and the way that boots are worn in different cities. In London I saw a lot of shorts, tights, boots pairings, okay? We seem to love a short. Conversely, while you do definitely see that in New York, I've seen more boot pairings with like a flowy dress, a bit more of that juxtaposition of something very stereotypically girly and feminine with something that's a bit more masculine and a bit harder on the footwear. I don't know why these pairings are different or that's happened. I just found it interesting. And staying on the topic of boots, boot preferences. Okay, this one I didn't expect to see as much of in the UK, which is a knee-high, mainly tighter boot. So something that's going to fit a bit more like a sock boot, but I saw them in leather, I saw over the knee, look a bit more skin tight. Everything from platforms or like sneakery looking boots all the way up to something that would look like Rachel from Friends would have jumped on. You know, like a little bit of a heel, a little bit of a snout, leather, knee high, that kind of thing. New York, cowboy boots. Oh, love a sodden cowboy boot. Maybe I need to jump on. I've not had a cowboy boot ever. Am I a cowboy boot gal? Could I be one? Mm, she's open to it. And again, everything from very, look, I'm not coming a, a, from a place that knows what a proper cowboy boot is, but everything from what looks to be an authentic cowboy boot, all the way to a sort of looser interpretation or kind of, you know, designer version of a cowboy boot that has the elements, that has some of the elements and some not, but I found that very interesting in the different, because it's quite a different taste in boots between the two there. The next trend we're jumping back into jackets. Londoners, we love a sodding blazer, don't we? My gosh, I don't know what it is. Blazers, mainly oversized cuts, okay? I don't really think, I saw the odd fitted blazer, but definitely, if you're looking at the sea of blazers, they definitely look a bit borrowed from the boys you know, as opposed to an hourglass sort of tailoring topped on top of everything. And again, I think that that gives a little bit more of a formal, dressier edge to a very casual look. And this is worn in a very casual way. And again, something that can do day to night very easily. In New York, I've seen a lot of blazers, yes, but generally the cuts of jackets are boxier and cropped. So like they hit at the waist, they're not necessarily, again, that tailoring isn't really that, you know, hourglass feminine tailoring. It's definitely boxier. It's definitely a little bit over on the oversized bomber dra jackets as well. I also just wanted to throw in some random other observations that I found very interesting. New Yorkers love a crop top. Oh my gosh, the amount of crop tops I've seen in different ways. I've seen far more crop tops here than I have in London and maybe again it's that little like a little bit more riskier edge to the city fashion wise paired with either high rise trousers or skirts or whatever or low rise I've seen it with both and also something that's consistent with both cities is a loose trouser again maybe feeding off that jeans thing trousers a little bit more tailored again looser side mainly more high rise and I did also want to talk about the bags between the two cities because this was fascinating to me. I would say generally New York has more variety in bag styles. Stick with me here. Basically in London you can tell the most popular bag style, no matter where you look, blah blah blah, is a crossbody bag. It's practical, it makes sense. In New York, it's not so cut and dry. In New York, there's much more sort of variety within bag styles. Definitely a crossbody vibe, but of a shoulder bag. 
they really do and that's quite fun to see i did also want to mention that i had my beady little eyes open in london this time looking for like what designer bags was i seeing the most and i have compiled a small list there are three main designer bag brands that i was seeing on this trip in london right and i'll tell you the the ones from each brand saint laurent the jamie the lou dior the 30 montan the caro and the lady dior Oh my gosh, I was not ready for the amount of, well, I've, I've just never really noticed before, the amount of Dior bags in London. Have a look, keep your eyes open, it's quite fascinating. And the other one is Gucci. Two, Gucci Marmont, are you surprised? No, but Gucci Diana, hello. That one made me happy a bit. Anyway, there you go. I hope you found that interesting. I found it interesting to write my little notes and, you know, be observant and all of that. I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. And in the words of my father. If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I'll see you in my next video. Mwah. Bye guys.